Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 3.2, number 25, and we were asked to find the domain of this function. And you'll hear me repeat this a lot, but there are always three domain issues in math. The first one is when we have fractions where the denominator is zero. The second domain issue we run into is when we have radicals with an even index and a negative radicand. And the third one is when we have logarithms where the argument is zero or it's negative. So if I take a look at the function that was given to me over here, I do have a fraction, I do not have a radical, and I do not have a logarithm. So let's address the fact that my denominator cannot equal zero. And in order to do that, what I really wanna do is set my denominator equal to zero. So let me just work this over here. If I look at x squared minus 81, I can factor that, oops, let me go ahead and just set that to zero so we can see what I'm doing. I wanna set my denominator to zero to see where it's actually equal to zero. So if I set my denominator to zero, I can factor it into x minus nine, x plus nine, and then through the zero product property, either x minus nine is equal to zero, or x plus nine is equal to zero. So that leaves me with nine and negative, oops, not negative one, nine and negative nine. And if I think about that on the number line, right, I basically started with all real numbers, but I need to give the boot to negative nine, and I need to give the boot to positive nine. So it's everything in here, just not nine and negative nine. So I would write that as this interval would be negative infinity to negative nine. This one would be negative nine to nine. And then this one would be nine to infinity. And that's why you see my answer over here. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.